Hi, Mom. Yeah. No, can you pick up Chris after school? Yeah, I'm, I'm at the doctor's. Mrs. Harris? Describe your symptoms. H hang on. Stress, headaches, nausea. Yeah, well, I work on Saturdays. And how long has this been? Equanimity. Balance your lifestyle. Dr. Mike? It is. How are you? I'm so fine. Thank you so much for joining us. And I oh, want my, my audience pleasure. to know that Dr. Mike is going to be my guest for the next five minutes, and he's a cardiologist and a trained chef. <laughs> well, Dr. Mike, that's a great combination there. It, it, it is, and it's it's really, it's like, you know, age of, of stone, old school. Um, you know, it's, it's fascinating to go back and look in the history of uh, both food. The very first cookbooks were written by physicians, and, you know, physicians dating way back to Hippocrates use dietetics as a huge uh, arm of their treatment regimen. So this is something that's just really, 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 really old school. Well, you know, medicine is food and food is medicine. And I yep. think we've gotten it uh, just a little bit out of source. But you guys are trying to bring us back to this now. How can we use medicine for a better life? Because I've been talking to people all morning and they know that we've been using food in, I'm sorry, okay. not medicine, food. We've been using food to bring us to the conditions of diabetes, high cholesterol, right. heart disease, right. you name it. Right, right. And, and that's such an important point. And I've actually uh, partnered with the folks from Novartis Oncology with this NetFusion initiative. And this looks at uh, how and why uh, food interacts with folks with chronic diseases, in this case with carcinoid syndrome, you know, how it affects their health or their, their wellness. And this applies, you know, because we're all in this food experience together, this applies not only to folks with uh, GI disorders like carcinoid syndrome, but diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and really all of us in an effort to maintain health. Okay. As food is, food is, I want to say it's getting better. You know, I just finished talking to a company where they're taking organics for the everyday person to mainstream. That's a big deal. Oh, that's great. The quality of our food is so important. And, you know, and again, you sort of touched on in the beginning when we use dietetics and medicine, you know, we're really much more therapeutically intertwined. You know, all the food we recommended was organic, right? You know, it was until very recently. So it's only, you know, over the last 50, 75 years or so that there's been these huge changes in our food and our food pathway. And, and we are reaping some of the unwanted benefits of altering our food and our food supply uh, with these chronic diseases. How does food break down? And I know that's a whole semester or more <laughs> in school, but how does food break down in our bodies? Because if you're eating a cupcake, it's got to be, a, a, it can't be as nutritious as spinach. No, no, it's not. And, you know, different foods affect us differently. And in fact, you know, that's one of the th really interesting things that we've kind of learned uh, from our initiative looking at the folks with uh, carcinoid syndrome is that, you know, for example, some of the foods that may make the symptoms worse, the abdominal pain, the bloating, the loose stools in one person, another person can eat that and not have any issue whatsoever. And for some of these folks, things like chili peppers, very spicy foods uh, can make the symptoms worse, but for some of them, it's a matter of degrees. So really one of the, the tricks, if you will, one of the insights we've learned is, you know, to have folks jot down. Uh, so maybe they ate that uh, cupcake you were talking about, and you know what? I don't feel so good. I get a little bloated. Well, we jot that down. We take note of that, and we can keep track of that and then start to identify the things that make us feel really good uh, and the things that maybe you know, we don't feel so good after we eat. And that kind of can guide our therapy as well, our food choices. And give us a quick overview of what car carcinoid syndrome is. Oh, sure. So carcinoid syndrome is a, is a very 
uh, it's a type of gastrointestinal tumor. It's very slow growing. So these folks really have a chronic disease that they have to deal with for many, many decades. It primarily occurs uh, in the gastrointestinal or digestive tract. And what's unique about carcinoid is, and as we've learned over the last several decades, our gut communicates all the time with the rest of our body, signals to our brain, signals to our heart, uh, communicates with our liver and our kidneys, our lungs. And it does this, one of the mechanisms by which it does this is with hormones. And while these tumors secrete hormones, so it can kind of wreak havoc uh, with a gastrointestinal tract or digestive tract and cause a constellation of symptoms, flushing, fast heart rate, loose stools, abdominal pain, etc. People living with this dietary changes, once it's defined, that helps? Yeah, and they can definitely help themselves. And we know with any chronic condition, whether it be carcinoid syndrome or diabetes or cardiovascular disease, so much is, you know, taken away. You're put on medicines. You're told to do this. You're told to do that. You know, it can be very discouraging, not only for patients, but patients' families, and really, really impact their lives. But, you know, food, at least for me, I'll speak for myself, gives me great pleasure when I eat something delicious. And that is, a cho that is something that we still have a choice over. So when we make these choices, when we make choices about delicious food that affect us positively, we empower ourselves. And I absolutely love giving this information, you know, to patients and their families and everyone because it empowers us. You're in charge of what you put in your mouth. Dr. Mike, where can my audience go and get some more information on this? Because I always feel there's someone who's suffering with something my guest talks about. Absolutely. And as I said, this is really applicable to, to all of us uh, to maintain you know, good health and enjoy great food. Just head over to Carcinoid Connection on Facebook. Lots of great links, references, information there. Uh, you know, um, lots of great stuff for the folks got to come back and talk about food and exercise because one uh, without the other is uh, not as good. <laughs> you are absolutely right. I'll be delighted to be back. Thanks so much for Thank having you, me. Dr. Thanks, Dr. Mike.